But I'm going to talk about not talk about not talk about microkernel related stuff, but the, I'm going to introduce the uh, our project, which was inspired, which was started with the inspiration of the microkernel stuff. So I'm Hajime from Japan, and uh, I'm going to talk about. I'm going to start with why we started this project. So, as you might know, or you are familiar, you will be familiar with this. Uh, there are plenty of the projects that is trying to emulate or mimic the Linux kernel behavior in the different shape of the software. Like uh, Microsoft uh, invented invented the Drawbridge draw project, which which was which was studied as a library operating system, but they they are now forming as a another software which is called the Windows subsystem for Linux. It's try to emulate Linux binary executable uh, on top of the Windows operating system without any virtualization, uh, hypervisor technology. And Google also trying to uh, introduce uh, another project, which is called the Gvisor. Uh, this is a kind of a sandbox for the container environment, which emulates the Linux kernel feature in the user space in Go languages. And there are another academic project like uh, Graphene also offer the similar facilities. They provide the Linux uh, emulation, Linux compatibility layer in the various operating system as the Dorobridge project that, uh, has been doing. So they, are, they, are, they, they, they offer the Linux binary compatibility in various operating system, not only for the Linux, but also Windows, micro, uh, Mac OS, and the BSD stuff, and BSD family, as well as the uh, different ex execution environment like uh, Intel SGX extension. And the final project I mentioned here is NOAA, uh, which is another, uh, another compatibility data project uh, running, the, running Linux application on Mac OS. So those are very similar. The, the internals of the implementation, the design already uh, looks like very similar. But uh, the compatibility that, can, that they can achieve is always incomplete. Some of the system calls are missing always. And, as I, uh, and, and uh, the resulting, uh, they result in the different uh, direction in order to provide the Linux facilities. For example, the Microsoft, uh, the Microsoft of the Windows subsystem for Linux is now has a version number two which they try to shift the architecture from the, this library operating system based one into the hypervisor based one, which I think they gave up to emulate this kind of Linux, uh, Linux emulation in this user space implementation. But our motivation in this project, in our Linux kernel library project, is we don't want to delete the Linux kernel twice or three times or forever. Because the Linux kernel, Linux kernel is written in C, and then your program or our program may also be written in C program. Even though you are, you are using different program languages, you can use the C, you can call the C function from your uh, language runtime. So our motivation is why not reuse this Linux kernel source code in a different shape as a reusable library? So this motivation is quite similar to the guy, the, the guy from the NetBSD kernel, which, they, which, he, which he introduced any kernel architecture in the monolithic uh, kernel. So this slide shows the brief overview of the, what the LKL, or Linux kernel library, looks like. So our library, our, our, our code will be generating a library which can be shared or which can be linkable from the program, external programs. So the, and the, the implementation of the LKL is uh, taking a similar approaches as the user model Linux does, which takes, uh, which creates the new architecture directory inside the Linux kernel software. But uh, this architecture is totally hardware independent we are trying to outsource all the hardware dependent code inside the architecture code into the different one, which are described in the, this, the bottom one, bottom 
part of the, this architecture. And by, by taking this design, the Linux kernel's code can be executable in the various environments. So far, we have experience with running this Linux kernel code on the Linux user space without any kernel interaction. And we can run also this library on Windows operating system, FreeBSD, and the Android user space application. And some of, uh, some of them were playing with the, this, this code in the UEFI bootloader. And some of them are also playing with the, uh, using this part, this portion with the unikernel, as a unikernel. So if you look at this, this program, this, uh, this program as a user space network stack, because you can use this library which contains the TCP implementation inside the library, and the, your prog TC, uh, socket program can call this library without interacting with the kernel. So there are plenty of the user space network projects uh, which I listed in the part of the, all of the project. So most of them are trying to achieve the higher, high speed performance with the user space execution because they can eliminate the uh, context, context switch uh, overhead between the user, user and the kernel mode interaction. But uh, they, they usually suffer from the application interfaces because they use their own interface for the application. Some of them provide the project layer compatibility for the, this kind of user space network stack, but it's not always complete. Uh, it's not always complete, like uh, some of them lacks the EPOL support for the library. But our goal should be identical to the, what Linux can do. So both two should be the same. In our, in our motivation. So the internal of the architecture is, as I mentioned, we are trying to create the new, newly introduced architecture inside the Linux kernel 3 by eliminating hardware or underlying layer dependency inside this architecture. And uh, the outsourced portion of this uh, architecture, like uh, accessing the hardware resources, like a clock, memory, or process scheduling. They, this kind of detailed information should be contained is inside this host environment, which can solve all the underlying layer dependency inside this host environment. So this part should be very portable inside the Linux kernel source. And, uh, Another goal, another goal of this project is we don't want to try to modify this, this gray part, not only the kernel part, but also the application code should be usable as is. So because we decided to provide the API to the application, but this raw format of, of API is not compatible to a standard library implementation. So the fa first part of the host backend uh, is located at, under the newly introduced architecture, which try to unify the interface between uh, across the different environment. So host environment has a different implementation. Like we currently have a POSIX interface and the Windows, Windows operating system interface, as well as the, the bridge implementation of the RAMP hyper code which can be expand the under and the support this of the underlying layer. And in order to communicate this library in with this external component, we provided the, uh, the virtual device layer, virtual device implementation inside the host, this host environment. And it exposes as a BATO IO interface so that the Linux kernel code can use the driver, implement, driver implementation of the BATO IO. So we have implemented block devices implementations as well as the network interface uh, implementation. And we also have experimentally implemented the BATO IO BATO file system implementation, which can be exposed as a 9P file system 
to the uh, to the driver layer. So this can be almost explained in the previous uh, slide, but uh, so second component is a CPU independent architecture implementation inside the uh, Linux kernel tree. And the third component is application interface, which is located on, on top of the, the kernel implementation. So with LKL, we expose the, our own system code API, which is called LKL system calls. But this system code is not compatible, as I mentioned before. So we provided the various way to access this uh, uh, interface by uh, from the application. So, so the first API is the LKL system called Low API. So if you have an application and if you want to use the LKL, you have to use you have to rewrite the system call part of your application by uh, replacing the symbols. Right, from the socket to the LKL sys prefix one, prefixed one. So this API is kind of, uh, is slightly different from the typical standard uh, POJIX API because this is the entry points of the kernel, Linux kernel. So the error number, error number and the return values are slightly different from the POJIX API. So another interface that we provided right now is the which called so-called the hijack library, which is basically based on the dynamic translation on the runtime by LD preload. So if you have a socket, uh, if you have a POJIX API uh, application, and you don't want to rewrite the application, you don't, or you don't want to rebuild your application, your binary can be translated with this additional library. But uh, the, it has a limitation that uh, the, some of the standard library, library implementation makes some of the symbols invisible from the application side. So you cannot rewrite such a symbol. So in that case, your application may not work well. So another API is our own standard libc implementation. We, right now, we, we use the muscle libc as a standard library uh, implementation, and we port it this muscle libc as uh, to be able to use the LKL from the user space code. So I'm going to uh, share you some of the use cases that we use with this uh, Linux kernel library, because this is library. If nobody uses this library, this software is useless. So I'm going to present uh, our, our known use cases, but if you have, uh, I wish to have you, I wish you to have a more expanded use cases if you have a nice idea. So the first typical use case is to mount a disk image without root privileges. So some of the operating system uh, uh, has a, uh, experimental implementation of the file system in user space. Like uh, if you have a ext4 file system image for the virtual machine, and if you want to modify these images on the foreign operating system like on Windows or Windows operating system, you may have to use such an alternative imp implementation of the ext4, which may not complete implement, which may not cover the complete specification of the e ext4, or you have to use the virtual machine and the boot the Linux OS and the mount the disk images and the rewrite or modify the contents of the uh, disk images. But you don't have to do such a complicated stuff. You can just use this library as a Windows application and modify it inside the, your user space program. So you can, you can now modify the butterfs uh, contents of the file system images in the uh, different operating system. So another use case is, is trying to introduce the kernel feature in the very <laughs> restricted environment if, which you don't have a freedom to uh, decompose the kernel space in, uh, implementation. So this is an example of the introduction of the multiple TCP implementation of the, on the Android phone. By the way, the MPTCP is already upstream in the previous, previous week, 
And we don't have to do such a stuff right now, but uh, this is a snapshot of the two years ago, I guess. And at that time, we don't have much HTTP support. But you can, we can do it because we have a user space implementation of the Linux kernel on the Android phone. So another toy implementation is the Unix pipe as a network interface card. So you, if you have a three different or two different programs using LKL, and each of the program has a network stack implementation. And if you write the packets generated by the scanner into the console, and the, then if the next program receives the con this packet by a pipe as a receive channel of the network interface card, you can do something, I don't know. So if you can, if you want to make access control by this pipe, pipe communication, you may use, you can use the grep command in order to filter the specific payload of the packet with the grep command argument. And if you want to duplicate the generated packet into the, some external program like a TCP dump, you can do, you can you do with the T command by mirroring the packet into the different processes. That's almost it. And uh, another example is that trying to convert the Linux kernel code into the JavaScript program. Uh, since last year, I guess, uh, Linux kernel can be built with LLVM, and the LLVM can generate the JavaScript code with additional trick. You can run Linux kernel code without any emulation, like JS Linux does. But you can directly invoke the Linux kernel code in the browser. So this is the initialization task of the Linux kernel in the C code. This code will be translated as like this, which is with the, this is automatically generated, generated by the Enscript on toolset. And you can run the Linux kernel code on the browser. So another use case is the running the Linux binary code on the different operating system. So this demo is actually running on the Mac OS with the Nginx implementation with provi providing this contents of the slides. So we have implemented the OCI runtime imp implementation, which coordinates the in invocation of the Linux kernel library, and try to communicate or interact with the container engine. So we, only ca we currently only tested with the container D implementation, as well as the, our own crafted Docker D implementation which is running on the Darwin without any virtualization. So, so this is the, this is running Docker daemon and uh, this is not connected, connected to, oops, not connected to the Linux host, but running inside of this MacBook natively, and uh, you can run the docker run command with our own crafted images with nginx command, and it is running the Linux boot uh, kernel log with main core of the nginx implementation. We actually need an additional configuration, but uh, it's not How do I show? Okay. <coughs> I think it's I. So there is also some folks who is also using LKL in order to test a file system implementation with the, their own implemented fuzzer. I have not involved this project, so you can, if you are interested in, you can try to look at their paper which is listed in the slides. <coughs> so there is another implementation using an approximation, but I'm, going, I'm running out of time, so I skip this one. So 
we also try to expand the uh, underlying layer facility in order to integrate other implementation like a solo five implementation. Uh, we have also started the upstreaming this code into the Linux mainline. So we, we actually tried to upstream several times in the past, but now we have suggestion from the maintainer which we should work with, work together with the user mode Linux. So we are trying to integrate this code into the user mode Linux implementation as a different execution mode is the library. So that's almost it. So if you have a program and you, if you can link this library as a link flag, you may, I wish you will have a, uh, another benefit that you cannot see in the past. Thanks so much, thanks so much for your attention and I'm happy to take a question. I didn't bring the performance results today, but the, the, the characteristics of the performance is almost similar to the user space network stack, which, can, which we can eliminate user space kernel interaction. So we will have a benefit of the user space execution, like what DPDK can, guys can do. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Thank you.